This is Morning Prayers at St. Peter's Hipsley, brought to you online, a place where we study God's Word together and where we join our hearts and our voices before the throne of God, praying for the needs of our world, our church, and ourselves. Welcome this morning. The Lord be with you this morning, the 6th of January, Saturday, 6th of January which is the Feast of the Epiphany. And as we come together today, I'm using the order of service for a service of the word from common worship. Grace, mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. We sing our first carol for the epiphany and that is O oh, worship the Lord. So we gather together and join our hearts and voices together as we join in the song of the angels, the Gloria in Excelsis. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. 
receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. We come now to our time of uh, the scripture and we start by listening to Psalm 72 as it's read to us from out of the NIV in the voice of David Suchet. Psalm 72. Psalm 72. Endow the king with your justice, O God, the royal son with your righteousness. May he judge your people in righteousness, your afflicted ones with justice. May the mountains bring prosperity to the people, the hills the fruit of righteousness. May he defend the afflicted among the people and save the children of the needy. May he crush the oppressor. May he endure as long as the sun, as long as the moon through all generations. May he be like rain falling on a mown field, like showers watering the earth. In his days may the righteous flourish and prosperity abound till the moon is no more. May he rule from sea to sea and from the river to the ends of the earth. May the desert tribes bow before him and his enemies lick the dust. May the kings of Tarshish and of distant shores bring tribute to him. May the kings of Sheba and Seba present him gifts. May all kings bow down to him and all nations serve him. For he will deliver the needy who cry out, the afflicted who have no one to help. He will take pity on the weak and the needy and save the needy from death. He will rescue them from oppression and violence, for precious is their blood in his sight. Long may he live. May gold from Sheba be given him. May people ever pray for him and bless him all day long. May corn abound throughout the land. On the top of the hills may it sway. May the crops flourish like Lebanon and thrive like the grass of the field. May his name endure forever. May it continue as long as the sun. Then all nations will be blessed through him and they will call him blessed. Praise be to the Lord God, the God of Israel, who alone does marvellous deeds. Praise be to his glorious name for ever. May the whole earth be filled with his glory. Amen and Amen. This concludes the prayers of David, son of Jesse. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. Amen. What a wonderful reminder of God's greatness. Setting people free, delivering the poor and the needy, having pity on the weak, redeeming our lives from oppression and violence and so we give thanks to God for that but we've seen now about the wise men that came from the east to find Jesus and to worship him we three kings of Orient are <music> Of Orient are bearing gifts, we traverse afar, field and fountain, moor and mountain, following yonder star.
some of the things that we read about or we sing about in that song. Matthew chapter 2 verses 1 through to 12 and I'm reading from the English Standard Version. Now after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod the king, behold wise men from the east came to Jerusalem saying where is he who has been born king of the Jews? For we saw his star when it rose and have come to worship him. When Herod the king heard this, he was troubled and all Jerusalem with him. And assembling all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where this child, the Christ child, was to be born. And they told him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for so it is written by the prophet, And you, O Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For from you shall come a ruler who will shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod summoned the wise men secretly, and ascertained from them what time the star had appeared. And he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for the child, and when you have found him, bring me word that I too may come and worship him. After listening to the king, they went on their way. And behold, the star that they had seen when it rose went before them until it came to rest over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they rejoiced exceedingly with great joy. And going into the house, they saw the child with Mary his mother, and they fell down and worshipped him. Then opening their treasures, they offered him gifts, gold and frankincense and myrrh. And being warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they departed to their own country by another way. I'm going to read the collect for Epiphany that comes in the Book of Common Prayer. And I want to base my reflection on a thought that comes from that collect. Sovereign God, who by the leading of a star revealed your only Son to the Gentiles, mercifully grant that we who know you now by faith 
May after this life behold your glorious splendor through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The image that begins this collect is highly evocative of Christmas. The star leading the wise men to the place where Jesus was born and was kept. Not a stable as erroneously we sing and read about, but no doubt wherever it was, these wise men came to find him and they found him. We are not going to consider ourselves and get ourselves involved in the astronomical phenomenon of the star and what it might have been, where it came from, or who exactly why they were the wise men and where did they come from. This collect is actually about something far more important that comes out in our gospel reading and the gospel testimony. It's about the wise men. They were Gentiles. Ever since God revealed himself to Abraham and his will and his purpose to Abraham, God had promised that eventually all the nations would be blessed through Abraham's chosen line. In other words, Abraham's family, God had chosen them that through them he might bless the world. It's hard to believe how this could happen, especially as the Jews, the Israelites, were meant to keep themselves separate from the Gentiles, who were considered to be unclean according to the law. They were the ones, it was the Gentiles were the ones who conspired against God and King. So how could God bless them through his people if his people had no connection with them? Yet God's promise was there. God had promised it. His promise hadn't changed. And as we read the unfolding story of Abraham's descendants, it is of interest that to the Gentiles as to the chosen Jews. We see God working with the Jews and we sit there with bated breath waiting to find out how we Gentiles too might join in God's blessing, the God blessing that he's promised his people. Isaiah promised, he promised us a servant who would establish justice in all the earth and be a light to the nations, to those of us living in darkness without God, without a hope in the world. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 12, Paul refers to this. What joy, what singing indeed this should bring in our lives. That we who dwell in darkness and play in injustice uh, and cruelty under sin, redemption is drawing nigh, the light is beginning to shine, there is hope. This young shoot that the wise men were seeing there, the Gentiles could see, would one day be despised. He would suffer, but somehow he would bear our iniquities. And we read about the suffering servant in Isaiah 53. How could it be that the suffering servant, suffering at the hands of his own people, could be a source of blessing to the Gentiles, to you and to me? Yet, when we read the story in Matthew 2, and we read the nativity story, Magi from the East, who are Gentiles, come looking for a king. Not just the king of the Jews, but somebody that they could call king. And a strange king, this one. Born in a very lowly place, placed in a manger. Angels announcing that he's a savior. Could this child be the one that would bring light to the Gentiles? That would bring that blessing to the Gentiles? Later, a prophet would come and would go about proclaiming Isaiah's words, preaching repentance and declare that God's salvation was coming. And then one came in the power of the Spirit, declaring that he 
when being the baby we, we are celebrated was there to proclaim freedom for prisoners. The oppressed would go free. Do we stagger in gratitude? Are we moved to our deepest being when we read these words that he spoke to us in Luke 4, 18 to 19? He would indeed suffer. And our freedom came in that most surprising way. As he died and rose in defeat of death, risen, he gave grace and apostleship to a former prosecutor, even persecutor, who would now be his witness to the Gentiles. This risen Jesus meets with Saul on the way to, to, to Damascus. And Saul's life is turned around and God gives him this responsibility of taking the gospel to the Gentiles. So that the Gentiles might turn from darkness to light, from the power of Satan to God, from bondage and slavery to freedom, from the kingdom of darkness into his marvelous life so that we might be able to receive the forgiveness of sins and a place among those who are sanctified by faith in him. We should rejoice with singing at this gift that we've been given, that we who were Gentiles have been grafted into the vine that is Christ, so that together with the Jews, in all and overwhelming thankfulness to be rescued from the futility of our thinking, everything we tried to do was futile, but God has rescued us from that. He has made us a part of Jesus, of the family of God. We were darkened in our understanding. We were separated from the life of God because of our ignorance that we had due to our hearts being hardened. And Paul speaks about this in Ephesians 4, 17 to 18. Yet we are no longer in darkness. We have the light. That child is now the light that shines into our lives. And this light is far more than that star in the sky that heralded his birth, that shone in the place where he was so that the wise men could find him. According to the collect, it is a symbol of our inclusion into a doubly undeserved gift of the salvation that came first to the Jews that we can then avail of. Through faith, we can have obedience. Through faith, we have become an offering acceptable to God. What a glorious, rich mystery. Splendor indeed. God's blessing that he had given to Abraham, now through one of Abraham's offspring, has broken out into the Gentile world. And we can celebrate because we are partakers of God's grace. We are partakers of this great gift that Jesus is giving. Splendor indeed. What a glorious, rich mystery. It is joyful. It is full of, of, of that sense of freedom because Jesus has come to fulfill the promise that the Father had made way back in the Garden of Eden and then to Abraham himself. So, say this collect with me if you are able to. Sovereign God, who by the leading of a star revealed your only Son to the Gentiles, mercifully grant that we who know you now by faith, may after this life behold your glorious splendor. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We say the Apostles' Creed 
speaking of our faith in the God that broke into our world to bring light into our darkness. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The grace of God has dawned upon the world through our Saviour Jesus Christ, who sacrificed himself for us to purify a people as his own. Brothers and sisters, let us confess our sins before Almighty God. Lord God, we have sinned against you. We have done evil in your sight. We are sorry and repent. Have mercy on us according to your love. Wash away our wrongdoing and cleanse us from our sin. Renew a right spirit within us and restore to us the joy of our salvation. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. May the Father of all mercies cleanse us from our sins and restore us in his image to the praise and glory of his name. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Today the wise men knelt before our Saviour let us also kneel to worship him with great joy and to make our prayer to his heavenly Father. Father, the wise men came from the East to worship your Son. Grant to Christians everywhere a true spirit of adoration. We pray for our brothers and sisters in the Eastern Orthodox tradition. Especially we remember those in Russia and in the Ukraine. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, your Son is the King of kings and Lord of lords. Grant an abundance of peace to your world. We pray for peace in the Middle East at this time. We pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, the Holy Family shared the life of the people of Nazareth. Protect in your mercy our neighbours and families, together with the whole community of which we are part. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, your Son was rich, Yet for our sakes he became poor. Show your love for the poor and powerless and strengthen all those who suffer, those whose names are written in our catch, those whose names are known only to us and those who have nobody to pray for them this night, this day. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. Father, the wise men presented to your son gold, incense and myrrh. Accept the gifts we bring and the offering of our hearts at the beginning of this new year that we might live in the light of your presence. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, you are the King of heaven. 
the hope of all who trust in you. Give to Heather Berry, Graham Bennett, John Spencer, and all the faithful department, the wonders of your salvation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Rejoicing in the fellowship of wise men, shepherds and angels, and of the Blessed Virgin Mary and Saint Joseph, we commend ourselves and all Christian people to your unfailing love. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. And so, as we rejoice at the coming of Jesus into the world, rejoice at the gift of being made part of the same family of God because of what Jesus has done, we pray with confidence as Jesus taught his disciples to pray, as we say, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sin, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We sing our final carol, which is brightest and best are the sons of the morning. Christ, 
the Son of God, perfect in you the image of his glory, and gladden your hearts with the good news of his kingdom, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. We go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Thank you for joining me today as we've celebrated Epiphany at the beginning of the season of Epiphany together, whether at this time in the morning or later in the day as you watch it back. Tomorrow morning at 10.30 we gather in church for the first Sunday after the Epiphany. We'll be thinking about the Epiphany a bit more but concentrating on the baptism of Christ and what that means, how that brings the light of God into our lives. And then we will be back again on Monday at 10 o'clock to continue in morning prayer. So till then, enjoy all that the Lord has for you in store today. And I shall see you later. Goodbye and God bless. Thank you.